Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, after several weeks of campaigning in the bluegrass, it is now up to Kentucky Democrats to decide whether Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders is the best fit for their presidential nomination. The nation will have their attention on the race between Clinton and Sanders, but we'll look at the other races Kentuckians will be voting on in today's primary. And another fallen Kentucky first responder will receive a national honor this weekend. We'll tell you how just ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good Tuesday morning to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Thanks so much for joining us. And I'm Bill Bryant. A chilly start to this morning, and we have some rain in most of our viewing area this morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Who's tracking that on this primary election day? Yeah, it is a wet go at it this morning. If you're planning to head out to the polls, remember those are open in here in an hour at 6 a.m. And if you're heading out there, you better carry that umbrella, and you better carry the jacket, too. Because it's chilly outside. We're in the 40s for most locations. A couple of 50s sprinkled in here and there. 48, 50 degrees, you're not going to feel that difference. By the afternoon, upper 50s, lower 60s for most. Some down south, actually, in the mid to upper 60s. So it all depends on where you are today. The focus of the forecast, though, obviously the soaking rain, but also the dry days. We need those dry days. I'm going to show you exactly when I expect that and when the rain moves on out coming up. Okay, see you then. Thank you. So a little less than an hour from now, polls will open across most of the state for Kentucky's Democratic primary. Highlighting today's ballot are Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Each have made several stops across the bluegrass within the last few weeks, and both are making their case as to why they think they would be the best fit for the Democratic presidential nomination. But as WKYT's Mark Barber joins us live to tell us it is now up to Kentuckians to decide. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. When the polls open here in just about an hour, Democrat voters will then have 12 hours to decide which candidate they want to become the Democratic nominee for president. They're also keeping in mind which one they think might have the best chance of beating the Republican nominee for president, which at this point appears to be presumptive nominee Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton was in Lexington late last night, campaigning down to the very last minute, making her final push for voters. Senator Bernie Sanders also campaigned in Kentucky over the weekend. The two are fighting to pick up as many of the state's 60 delegates as possible. While there have been many similarities between the two campaigns, both have heavily criticized Republican Governor Matt Bevin. They've been going after Kentucky voters differently. Clinton had more small in, uh, meet and greets than anything else, emphasizing her policies for job creation and better opportunities for the working class. On the other hand, Sanders had a number of large rallies where he outlined his plans to overhaul the criminal justice system, raise the minimum wage, and give free college to students. So which of those messages resounded more with voters? Well, we're about to find out. Polls will open at 6 this morning, and those votes will start being counted immediately. The polls will close at 6 tonight. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. In the rain out there this morning, and on the Republican side, presumptive nominee Donald Trump won the Kentucky GOP caucus that was held back in March, so that is not on the ballot today. He is running effectively unopposed in today's other primary in Oregon. Trump told Fox News reporter Megyn Kelly that he does not consider himself to be a bully despite claims from his opponents. He says he just responds to what they say about him first. And Ohio Governor John Kasich said he will not launch a third-party bid for president, saying it does not feel right. The national spotlight for today's primary certainly will be on the race between the two presidential candidates, but Democrats across the state will be voting in several other races as well. Yeah, Kentuckians will vote for U.S. Senator, U.S. Representative, and in some districts, state senators and state representatives. WKYT's Mike Byer continues our primary coverage with a closer look on the other races featured in today's primary. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. I'm at Harrison Elementary School where the polls open at 6 this morning for the U.S. Senate race. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is running on the Democratic side and is also expected to cast his vote here this morning. Gray touts his mayoral experience and business pedigree. He's running against six primary opponents in today's election. They include Celis Wilder, a filmmaker inspired by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, and Ron Leach, who served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Over on the Republican side, frontrunner Senator Rand Paul faces two primary challengers, James Gould and Stephen Slaughter. 
Paul campaign spokeswoman Kelsey Cooper says the senator maintained a 96 percent attendance record for Senate votes. She cited his efforts to curtail the federal government's surveillance powers and protect gun ownership rights. Now, Mayor Gray will look to end his party's U.S. Senate losing streak, a losing streak with date, which dates all the way back to 1992. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you. And if you are heading out to vote today, remember the busiest times at most polling places will be during the morning and evening rush hours. And it also gets pretty busy during the lunchtime hours. So maybe mid afternoon, mid morning might be best. You must have appropriate identification on you or be known by a precinct officer. You'll need a driver's license, a social security card, or a credit card. You can also bring any other form of identification that contains both a picture and a signature. While the polls will be closing at 6, anyone already in line at that time will be allowed to vote. It was like something out of the Dukes of Hazard. That's how Georgetown police described chasing after a stolen RV. It all began yesterday afternoon after police spotted the RV that had been reported stolen from Northside RVs in Lexington. Now, police attempted to pull the RV over, but the driver, later identified as 30 year old Jason Judd, refused to stop. Police say Judd took off through downtown Georgetown, side swiping several cars. He then turned down Royal Spring Street, which ends in a dead end. With no other options, police say Judd decided to keep going, taking the RV through several backyards. I think any time a pursuit, you think a pursuit's going to end at a, at a dead end road, and he busts through a fence, it's like Duke's Hazard. I mean, it just kept going. Georgetown police say nobody was injured in the chase, and despite several yards being torn up, residents said they were lucky it didn't end worse. Police charged Judd with wanton endangerment and possession of a controlled substance, among other offenses. We have learned more about a robbery at a Central Kentucky outlet mall after police say more than $15,000 worth of purses were stolen. Police say they found the Kate Spade purses in Spencer County yesterday morning. They say Aaron Bruner, a maintenance worker at the outlet shops of the Bluegrass in Shelby County, stole the purses from the Kate Spade store. Police say he, along with Courtney Cheshire and Marlon Hall, then sold some of the purses at pawn shops, gas station parking lots, and online. Bruner admitted to stealing the purses to support a drug habit after all three were arrested yesterday. Police have arrested a man who they say robbed a Lexington bank last week. Lexington police say 18-year-old Ramis Woods has been charged with robbery. Police arrested him in Nicholasville. They say Woods and two other men walked into the City National Bank on Walden Drive last Tuesday and robbed it at gunpoint. Police say one of the robbers wore a Captain America mask and a sweatshirt. They say they're still looking for the other two suspects in the case. A fallen Jesmond County paramedic will be receiving some national recognition this weekend. John Mackey died last November after a car hit him while he was on duty. He'll be among those honored during the National EMS Memorial Service in Washington, D.C. on Saturday. And his name will be on the National EMS Memorial once it's built. Now, Mackey's family plans to be in Washington this weekend along with some of his coworkers. We're there to support John, even though he's not with us and that he's being nationally recognized for a service that he left. Now, while the main EMS memorial is Saturday, there are other events leading up to it. Most of Mackey's family plans to leave for Washington later today. Well, WKYT this morning just getting started on your Tuesday morning. Our time now is 5.08. Still to come, he spent years working for the college, but now the school's custodian is among the latest graduates. We have widespread rain out there as we are tracking that throughout your day. I do have some good news in the forecast, but then it's topped off with a little bit of more bad news. I'm going to talk all about that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. There's a lot of rain out there falling across the region. Now, this is not heavy rain, but it's some light rain that's covering, well, the whole Commonwealth of Kentucky. Really, nobody out there dry right now. And most of this, like I said, is very light. You could have some moderate downpours here and there, but other than that, this is just a nice, steady, light rain. Perfect there for sleeping, but look who's up watching, look who's up working, right? You got to get out and about and you got to get going, even though the rain is falling on the rooftops. Not only that, but it is chilly this morning. It's already 46 degrees in Moorhead. You go into Menifee County, uh, we're working there in Frenchburg, and we're holding on to temperatures in the mid 40s. That goes for Jackson. Work your way down the Mountain Parkway through Powell. Wolf, McGoffin counties, even Clark County, Winchester, my friends there, and the mid to upper 40s, Danville coming in 
have 46 degrees. That goes for Nonsuch, Kentucky, Versailles, Midway, you guys there in Woodford County. 60 by the afternoon. Don't let it deceive you, though, okay? You got to remember, we cover 70 plus counties in our viewing area. 70 plus. That means if you're going northbound and it's 60 degrees, more than likely going southbound with a setup like this, it's not going to be 60 degrees. Northern Kentucky will actually be in the mid 50s. Central zones right around that 60 degree reading. Southern half actually pushing towards 70 degrees later on this afternoon. So it all depends on where you are, okay? So we're taking the happy middle there uh, with right around 60 degrees. So upper 60s, lower 70 south, mid to upper 50s northbound. And then we can go off into your afternoon. Listen, afternoon is about a 40, 50% chance of rain, which is a decent chance, don't get me wrong, but it's not as good as what you're seeing this morning. Everybody, 100% of chance, uh, everybody's seeing rain this morning. Afternoon, 40, 50% is starting to fade away off into the night and into tomorrow morning. What you're going to see is that rain actually slide southbound and move out of the region later on tomorrow morning. So afternoon actually looks pretty good. But if you're heading out to vote today, don't forget an umbrella and don't forget a, a, a raincoat, okay? And why I, why I say a raincoat too, because it's a little bit chilly as well. Dry Wednesday afternoon though, like I said, you'll get it during the morning hours tomorrow. But then it moves on out, actually a really nice Wednesday afternoon, right around 70 degrees. And that goes off into Thursday too. Thursday is no doubt about it, 100%. Your best day in the work week. Then what happens? Yeah, here we go with Friday, Saturday. Here comes some more soaking rain in the forecast, especially there on Friday at about 60, 70 percent. Now, we get off towards Saturday. You will have a few storms, but that actually works its way on out during the afternoon, too. So Saturday afternoon and evening might not be all that bad if you have some plans going on. You might be able to get them in. We're still five days away. We'll see how that turns out. But Sunday and Monday actually look pretty dry. Hopefully we can get on a dry spell. That would be nice. <laughs> it just, would. Just a consecutive, two consecutive days would be nice. We'll take that. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm eyeing Thursday. Yeah, I don't Thursday know about you guys. Looks good. So it's fun. No, this is the pick day. Yeah, that is for sure. All right. Micah, thank you very much. It's coming up on 515. This past weekend's graduation ceremonies at Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts was truly special for one man. 54 year old Michael Vander Voudre received his mechanical engineering degree from the school. He took a custodian job at the school eight years ago, shortly after losing everything when his plastering business failed. Since the school offers tuition free classes for employees, Voudre began focusing not just on the job, but also his studies. He says he found the classes challenging and loved being stretched intellectually. Now with the degree in hand, Voudre is looking for his next challenge in the form of a new job. No Good for right. him. Yeah, it's absolutely. never too late. New chapter for him at 54. <laughs> Congratulations. Good to have you along on WKYT 515 the time, bright and early on your Tuesday morning primary election day in the Commonwealth. When we come back, we'll have a look at your money. New data on the strength of the home market and an accessory that will turn your phone into a microscope. I'm Brooke Silva Braga in New York. Those stories and more coming up in Money Watch. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. We're glad you're with us. A bit of a rainy start to this primary election day, so uh, you need that as well as maybe a light jacket. Yes, you are going to need a jacket. And jacket uh, today. 519. Americans are sharing their top financial regret. And Google has a new communication app. Brooke Silva Braga has the latest on your money. Confidence in new home construction remains strong. A survey of U.S. home builders found a fourth straight month of optimism in the market. The index is again at 58. Anything above 50 is positive, though the score was in the 60s for most of last year. After a three week losing streak, stocks rebounded Monday, the Dow gaining 175 points and the Nasdaq up 57. Americans' top financial regret is not saving early enough for retirement. Other major sources of financial remorse, not saving enough for emergency expenses and taking on credit card debt. Google has a new way to communicate with friends. It's called Spaces, an app that lets you share links, YouTube videos and search results all in one place without bouncing between apps. It's available on Android and iOS phones. And here's something else for your phone. They're called blips, tiny lenses that attach to your phone's camera and can take some remarkable up-close photos, in some cases replicating a microscope. Look at that. The basic kit will cost about $35 and start shipping this summer. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silva Braga. 
A new study says federal and state governments are missing out on $28 billion by not legalizing marijuana. The study comes from an independent think tank called the Tax Foundation. Experts say most of the money made would be from taxes on pot. Critics worry legalizing marijuana could lead to more drug abuse and addiction. But experts at the Tax Foundation say people who abuse marijuana do so regardless of whether or not it's legal. So an interesting uh, public tax policy issue there uh, at this morning. And our time this morning is 521, and there's a lot more news coming up for you. We hope you'll stay with us. Let's get this day off and rolling. Yeah, sports is next. A top basketball recruit is ready to make his college decision, and Carl Towns has advice for future NBA rookies. We'll hear from him next in sports. Wet roadways for all early this morning. If you're about to travel, trust me on this. This rain is not stopping anytime soon. It's 49 degrees there in Frankfurt. You will need that rain coat too because it is a little bit chilly as you take off early this morning. Traveling in through the day, first half of your day, soaking rain. Second half of the day, it's more of just scattered out and about. So we will get breaks later on this afternoon. Afternoon is not as good of a chance as this morning. So keep that in mind as you're heading out about trying to make those plans, get out there and vote. The best chance to do it without actually getting hit by the rain, the best chance is later on this afternoon and off into our early evening hours before those polls actually close. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Will it be Kentucky or will it be Duke? The long-awaited decision of five-star center Marquise Bolden comes Thursday. It was about one month ago that Bolden wanted to make his announcement on his birthday, but of course that did not happen. Late yesterday afternoon, it was announced that the decision would come today, as in Tuesday, but now it's been pushed back to Thursday because of family reasons. The announcement will be at DeSoto High School near Dallas. Bolden goes six foot eleven. ESPN rates him as the number one center in the class. Rivals has him at number two. John Calipari putting out the final part of his vision for the future yesterday and saying that he plans to coach at Kentucky. Forget this. The remainder of his career and Cal wants to win. Calipari said, quote, our next challenge is to chase UCLA's 11 titles. I hope you understand that it's going to be very difficult. We've won eight titles since 1948 and now we're going to try to win four more. This could take mo more than a decade, but so what? Let's chase it. Can we do it? Sure, but it's going to be really tough. The tournament isn't a best of seven series, and the best team doesn't always win the title. Meanwhile, Carl Anthony Towns, a unanimous winner of the NBA Rookie of the Year award, only the fifth player to be a unanimous pick. Towns spent just one season at Kentucky, then went on to the draft in Minnesota, made him the number one overall pick. What advice, though, does he give to others who will follow after just one season in college? Just be comfortable. Be yourself. Don't try to be anyone else. You know, play your game and uh, enjoy the process. You know, you got to take time sometimes to just breathe. Just breathe and, and realize, uh, you know, what you have to work on, what you have to accomplish, and what do you, where do you see yourself. You know, goals are always meant to be accomplished, but you have to take the steps to get there. Good advice for some guys like Jamal Murray, Tyler Eulis, and even Scalabissier. That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great Tuesday.